first the plate to the top. You get the power, you can't burn. Oh, okay, well then tan squared. Either way, it's the same process, right? Because you're still going to have to do chain rule. So if you do tan squared, you're going to have to do 2 times tan to the first times its derivative, which is equal to So you're going to get the same thing either way. So we get 1, and then you get 0. Oh, that's swelly. Oh, good. Oh, sure, sure.
roll, you're going to have to do what? Split it up. You're going to have to split it up, right? Where do you have to split it up at? Zero. Zero, because that's where your vertical asymptote is. I'll even show you the first step. This is handwritten, sorry, it's not pretty, but it's there. Approaches zero from the left, right? 
All right, so here's the thing to think about. Number over zero, we know there's a vertical asymptote there, right? So we have number over zero. If we normally approached, uh, I wrote it up top, but I'll just write it again down here. All right, one over x looks like that. Four over x also looks like that, right? A hundred over x looks like that. They're all the same shape. So we have four over x looks like that. So if we did 4 over 0 from the left, it points to negative infinity, but we have a negative times whatever we get, so it ends up being positive infinity. So think about your graph of 4 over x, there's 4 over x, from the left, approaching 0 from the left is going to negative infinity, but because it's negative, you could think of it as flip-flopped, but it's going to approach positive infinity. And then, uh, let's see, half of 0 is 0. This is just numeric, negative 4. Now we get to this one. We get negative 4 thirds, 9 halves, and now we have to plug in a 0 from the right. So same thing, and actually here you got a minus negative, so it's a positive 4 over x from the right. So 4 over x from approaching 0 from the right would be also positive infinity. So you end up getting an infinity plus an infinity minus and plus a few little constants. So you end up infinity plus infinity is infinity. Yeah. So wait, can you just like think of it like when you plug in the zero to be, so like for the, the negative one, the negatives cancel out then? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's exactly right. Yep. Some answers are infinity. And it's okay. That's the fun part is you never know, right? Ooh, is it a third? Is it infinity? Keeps it fun. So. All right. Uh, that's not good. Where's my sweat pops? No, I have more. Oh, there's one. See there, see there. Wait, don't look, don't look. Oh, shoot, I already have one. Okay. All right. Give this one a try. There's a couple different approaches you can take, but there's one thing that you should definitely do before you do any of the other things. Long division. Ah, oh, negative plus a positive and you're really be stuck. Because it's an undetermined value. So, what you'd probably have to do then is see if there was a way you could combine the fractions somehow. Um, I will show you one of that. This is a good thing to know how to do. Yes. Is this the one you did in core? I don't think so. Okay. But you never know. I didn't get these from my course, but I haven't looked at my course slides in a while, so maybe I did pick the same problem. Yeah, it is. Oh, I'm sorry. That's good. Do you want me to get a different one? No, you're good. Oh, this one.
drink, so it's really not bad. I mean, it's not a crazy one. It's not like, go on. Just remember, if you do do it with trig sub, you have to rewrite it as a square root squared, right? Because trig substitution requires a root.
I'm like, well, let's see what it's equivalent to, right? And so we just kept going. No, I'm just it. was an That was a hyperbole, exaggeration for emphasis. There were not actually 46 different answers. Okay. I just, I just, All right. Can you scroll up? Can I scroll up? Sure. I don't know how far you want me to scroll. That's good. Okay. Is that good? Okay. All right. So, yeah, lots of ways to do these problems. It makes them fun. Uh, okay. I came up with, we were talking uh, this morning about how you approach those limit problems, right? All the complicated limit problems. And I know we talked about this yesterday, I think, with when you have something to a power, 0, 0, 1 to the infinity, so like an x to the x, right? And you're taking a limit. You set equal to y, take the natural log of both sides so you can put the exponent out front. When you do that, then you usually end up with something like 0 times infinity. When you have a 0 times infinity, you want to rewrite it as a quotient. Right? Even if you have to do it as 1 over 1 over something, uh, you want to get it as a quotient so that you can look at tell. But then the question came up with what happens if you have infinity minus infinity, right? What do you do if you have a limit of infinity, which did come up in when we did that section, but we haven't talked about it much. So when you have infinity minus infinity, you want to combine the fractions. This is just kind of a review of what stuff equals. So we did a limit. So let's try this limit. So I just honestly just grabbed the book and pulled a random question out of the book just to see if you could have some fun with this one, which if you plug the zero in from the right, it is infinity minus infinity. Yeah, if you learn that the limit of 10 over x as x approaches 0 from the right is infinity, that's great. I, uh, I am a very visual, my brain works visually. So the way that my brain does that limit is I actually picture the graph, right? If I don't draw it, I'm thinking it. So that's why I show you guys. So some of you may find that helpful, some of you may not. But if you're not sure if a limit's going to go to infinity or negative infinity, draw yourself a quick graph. 10 over x would look like that. 3 over x squared, so this is I think 10 over x. If we had to do 3 over x squared, well, do we want to keep the negative or not keep the negative? 3 over x squared without the negative, right, would look like that. Right, that's how you get, so from the right, you get infinity minus, minus infinity. So anyway, I'm a, I, that's how I picture this. All right, so. Did you combine the terms? No. So now if you plug in infinity from the right, uh, or zero from the right, and you get zero minus three over zero. That means it's negative three over zero. When you get a negative three over zero, you don't get to L'Hopital. You just have to, because it's not zero over zero, and it's not infinity over infinity. So if you have negative 3 over 0, number <coughs> over 0, you have to use your vast knowledge of vertical asymptotes to figure out the answer. How was Romeo and Juliet? Was it? Yeah. I'm very curious about it, but I will ask you later. Okay. okay. So anyway, 
For this one, since it's negative 3 over x squared, if we were just doing 3 over x squared from the right, it would approach infinity. But because it's negative, you get that negative infinity. All right. Yes, Steve? I took out a 1 over x, so that's just turned into the infinity times negative infinity. Which is negative infinity. Which seems a little easier. Yeah, and that's good too. All right, so that's it. Oh, that's me like showing the negative three of x squared because everyone was like, oh, so then I did it with the whole graph of negative three of x squared because it just flipped over. Yes. If it's um approaching zero, why wouldn't it be negative three, like negative three over infinity? Because you're plugging in a zero for x, not an infinity for x. But aren't you plugging in like? Oh wait! Oh, it becomes infinity. It becomes okay, infinity. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But the actual number you're plugging in is zero. Yeah. Yes. And that's the, the thing that's so tricky about these, is keeping that straight, right? Am I plugging in an infinity and is the answer zero? Am I plugging in a zero and is the answer infinity, right? Am I plugging in zero is the answer zero? You got to, so you got to make sure you're really thinking straight about these. Okay, so I have a blank slate here. I have a couple options for you of types of problems that we could work up to lunch. Uh, one person wanted to do a partial fraction with a quadratic. Does that sound like an okay option? Yeah. I got a, a big scrunch on that one. Um, look, at, I got two big nose wrinkles on that one. Um, okay, I'll tell you what. I will put up two problems. One partial fraction with a quadratic, and then those of you who did the nose scrunch, would you rather have an integral or a limit? Or an Euler's method or a logistic equation? Okay. Oh, goodness. All right, let's do a whole variety. All right, so. All right, so for our partial fraction example, I'm going to do. We'll make it tough. Is it okay to put it tough? Yes. 2x2 minus 4x minus 8 over, it's already kind of factored, not completely, but okay, so there's your partial fraction example. So this will be called a simple one. Alright, then someone someone wanted a low, a big low patal. Alright, so the hardest one possible, That's one where you have to switch around and do all kinds of stuff. Yeah. 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 You know what, I'm not a good one for that. I think it was in this book. Alright. Oh, you, you're still working on it? Well, no, but like, uh, maybe, uh, I'm just going to just angle it. No. Okay, here we go. Yeah, like it's just 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 what is the thing that hard? How about this, this one? Oh, <laughs> oh, this will be fun. Let's do these okay. Lines. okay, so we'll do a. Okay. I'm ready to So, look now, we'll do the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of uh -huh, e to the x plus 2x all raised to the 10 over x. That'll be fine. Okay. And then someone else wants a big, ugly trig substitution problem. Is that correct? So, oh, and someone wants another Euler? Yeah. Okay. Right. You just want the whole test. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. We should have a take home test.
This is a really easy integral. This guy, you might have to break up a little bit, right? Um, so I actually would rewrite this like this. So you want a 2x over your x squared plus 4, and then plus a 4 over your x squared plus 4. Because now it will work out really nicely. This is 2 ln x minus 2 ln s of x minus 1. All right, this is a straight up guts d guts power rule, right? Okay, if I said it right. So, because the derivative of 2x plus 4, or x squared plus 4, is 2x dx. So, this is just a 1 over u v u, right? So, this is natural log x squared plus 4. So, plus ln absolute x. Oh, you don't even need the absolute value. You just keep it off. It's fine. It's there. And then this one is what kind of a function? Arctan, right? It's in sync. Because x squared plus number. So, you have 4 over 2, so plus 2 arctan. Uh, and then it's uh, x over 2. Let's see. Yay, that was number one. Oh, yes. Number one. Yes, Amy. Um, okay, on the test, are we going to need to know any other things besides arctan? Like, are we going to know, like, arctan? You need to know arc sine and arc tan. Arc secant is something that you should know because it's required of all AP calculus what is arc but it doesn't come up very often. Arc sine is just 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So when you have number minus x squared on, in a square root on the bottom, that's an arc sine. So if you're watching the recording, the solutions to these will be on the smart board notes.